Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Jackson. In this slideshow and playlist, we will be covering the fourth unit of our introductory course in probability and statistics. This unit is on inferential statistics. Getting to inferential statistics has been one of our main goals in this course. Although the earlier topics are important in their own right, almost everything we have done has been in preparation for being able to do inferential statistics. This unit has nine main uh, sections, or eight main sections, which are outlined here. We begin with an introduction and overview of inferential statistics. Next, we introduce the idea of point estimators. The third section is where we introduce one of the two main concepts of the unit, confidence intervals. We follow this with an introduction to the other main concept of the unit, hypothesis testing. Both of these basic concepts are introduced by exploring inferences about means of populations with a normal distribution of sample means with a known population standard deviation. In other words, a z-test and a z-interval. Next, we look at the more realistic situation where a t-test and t-interval are appropriate, examining both one sample and two sample situations. From there, we move on to inferences about proportions, and then finally, inferences about variability. Again, performing both one sample and two sample tests. We conclude by looking at uh, approximating beta. Uh, as in my earlier videos, light blue text on these slides refers back to the textbook and or online resources provided by our textbook publisher. These slides will direct you when to read the appropriate textbook pages. In subsequent semesters, we may possibly change textbooks, in which case uh, those references will be changed on the slides in your notes. But um, there will still be, uh, so, so look to your notes there for the most up-to-date things there. Uh, purple text on these slides indicates which online homework problems you should work. So, after finishing the video, go to the homework set and work the indicated problems. Be sure to first watch the video or attend a lecture in person on the material and then begin working on the homework. These indications will be updated each semester as changes are made to the textbooks we use or online homework problems are updated. However, I will probably not re-record these videos, so students in my classes should look at these references on the slide handouts which I have provided for you for your specific semester, since they may be more up to date than those given in the slides that you see on these videos. So let's get started on inferential statistics. Before giving an overview and introduction to inferential statistics, let's start by giving a broad review of what we have already studied. This is where we start providing the material needed to complete homework set four for my class. Statistics is the science of data. It involves collecting, classifying, summarizing, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting numerical information. Probability and statistics then allows us to quantify uncertainty in order to assist us in making meaningful predictions and decisions. Making quantifiable Data-driven decisions is the goal of probability and statistics. There are three main branches of probability and statistics. Descriptive statistics, inferential statistics, and probability. Earlier in the course, we have a playlist for descriptive statistics. That was our unit one in our course. Then we have actually three units on probability and statistics to playlists. Playlist 2 was about discrete probability, which in my course is actually now units 2A and 2B. Then unit 3, or the third playlist, is on um, continuous probability. And then unit 4, this unit, is on inferential statistics. So unit 1, again, was on descriptive statistics, which is used to make sense of data, allowing us to effectively find and communicate important information from the data set in order to reach conclusions and make good decisions. In our first unit, we just studied descriptive statistics, and we will be drawing on that material in this uh, unit as well. Descriptive statistics organizes and makes sense of data, uses numerical and graphical methods, identifies patterns in data, isolates and summarizes key information, 
simplifies the information focus on in, focusing on the items of interest and eliminates undesired information to avoid information overload. With descriptive statistics, we can gain an understanding of data and effectively communicate that to others. Units 2A, 2B, and 3 were all about probability. Probability is used to draw conclusions about the likelihood that an arbitrary sample will have certain characteristics given information about a known population is driven, drawn from by assigning a numerical value to this event measuring the degree of uncertainty. Unit 2A introduced the basic concept of probability working with discrete sample spaces. Unit 2B continued to look at discrete probability detailing several important discrete distributions, most significantly binomial and hypergeometrics distributions which will be used in this unit. Unit 3 discussed continuous distributions, most significantly normal, T, chi-squared, and F distributions which are the ones that we're going to need for this unit. Probability works from a known population or historical data. It works from a population to a sample. So probability takes information from the structure of that known population and tells us how likely we are to obtain a specific sample from the population. In this sense, it's the inverse of inferential statistics. Probability assigns a numerical value from 0 to 1 to an uncertain event, identifying the likelihood of the event. So probability gives a numerical measure to the degree of uncertainty. For our last unit, we will study inferential statistics. Inferential statistics is used to draw conclusions about a population given information about a representative sample and use this information in good decision making. We often want to know information about the characteristics of a population, but it's impractical, expensive, or even impossible to measure the entire population. So what we do instead is use an analysis of data from a representative sample of the population to make estimates, predictions, generalizations, and decisions about the larger population. We use sample data to infer population characteristics. For example, we use a sample mean to approximate a population mean. Notice that the inferential statistics uses information from the sample to tell us about the population. In this sense, it's the inverse of probability. Inferential statistics allows data-driven decisions. Furthermore, it quantifies confidence in these decisions. Making good database decisions is the main point of the course and the main point of probability statistics. Our goal all semester has been to get to where we can use inferential statistics. While every topic we have studied is important on its own, one of the main reasons we have studied what we have and how we have studied it is so that we have all the tools necessary to study inferential statistics and understand how and why these techniques work. This is the main goal of the course. Inferential statistics uses concepts and skills from descriptive statistics and probability to develop inferential statistics techniques. In particular, the ideas from sampling distribution are a key component. We have been moving toward inferential statistics throughout the entire course thus far, and sampling distributions bring us right up to the door of inferential statistics. Inferential statistics, again, is the main goal of the course. The two main parts of inferential statistics are parameter estimation, point estimation, and especially confidence intervals, and hypothesis testing. We will examine these concepts in detail first with means from a population distributed normally with a known population and standard deviation, and we will then extend these ideas to several other situations. So the big two parts of inferential statistics are Confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. We'll look at these first by looking at a Z interval and a Z test, one sample. We will then extend these basic ideas to several other situations, including performing inferences about means, standard deviations, and proportions from both one and two samples.